All right, here we go. It is a beautiful morning, uh, just under 60 degrees, 855. Raylene gave us permission to uh, to go on the air early this morning, Tom, just a few minutes early. Hey, you were just uh, Tom Lozon, uh, our former mayor here at the Granite City, if you're just joining us, and thanks for being a part of uh, Aired Out. Uh, brought to you by Central Vermont Chamber of Commerce, Barry Area Development, FGB Theaters, RetirementVT.com, Aeromed Essentials, Vermont Custom Woodworking, and the Barry Montpelier Times Argus. You were just talking a second ago before we went on about your favorite book, Who Stole My Cheese? Yeah. What, what is that? <laughs> what, what is that? What is that? I, I, I bet a, a bunch of your... And by the way, thanks for having me on. Well, Happy thanks Thursday for coming in you. here. Happy Thursday to um, you. So it's a book about institutional change. Yeah. Uh, but it's a great read. It's a short read. Mm. And uh, I, I don't want to spoil it for anyone if they haven't read it, but uh, it's a book about how people deal with change, right. how some people have an easier time than others. So you were saying, bottom line is, uh, the, the, a bunch of mice have some cheese, and they wake up one morning, and they discover that it's been moved, and some of them are, are, are screaming, who, who stole our, our cheese? And exactly. the others are trying to figure it out. Exactly. Well, in in a real oh. nutshell, <laughs> oh. Oh. but it's a it, it's a lot more than that. It's a great book about uh, institutional change, about accepting change. And you made your kids and, read and this. how how successful people deal with change. Did you make your kids read this? I did. <laughs> I did. Well, well, I didn't make them read it. Yeah. I I gave I've given and uh, I gave each of them a copy oh. and encouraged them to read it, and so they did, and oh. they like it too. You look dapper today. Welcome, Mr. Well, Lozon. thank you. I, yeah. You always look this <laughs> it's way. just another Thursday. But. Uh, man, we have so much to get to. Uh, I want to read a uh, comment that came in yesterday. Oh, Lord. <laughs> 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 what, what, what are you nervous about? Come on. Yeah. Listen. Who stole my shoes, buddy? When, when, when Tom Lozon comes on. <laughs> Every time, you, all the years in Froggy, when you were on the air with oh, me. Oh, we had so much fun. You're always driving the bus. I'm in the passenger seat when, when Lozon's in the house. Let me, let me clue you in. Mm -hmm. No one drives the bus. Control is an illusion, okay? So if you ever go through your day thinking that you are in control, um, it's an illusion. But You're not, wrong. But, but we're not, in control of our own destiny to some extent, but this mostly we're not in control of the circumstances. We're only in control yeah. of how we react to them. Mm. However, when you're on the air with me, <laughs> you're in control. You're the boss. I have nothing to do. I mean, I'm just, I can't drive. Do you hear uh, that, Karen? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hear that? I am the boss. Uh, sure. Uh, <laughs> But thanks for that. Christy wrote in yesterday and said uh, that you, and I think most of us know this, are the head of uh, the Economic Restart Program with the governor. Uh, not chairing it. I am a member of the governor's uh, Economic Recovery and Mitigation Task Force. All right. She says, I'm curious what the plan is on that. And if he's also planning on scooping up all of the office buildings for sale in Montpelier while the economy has tanked due to the pandemic, looks did like she, did she really? Yes, she did. Looks like special interest to me. What? What? What is this? All uh, look! About? Look! Come on. Uh, Let's air it out. Fair enough. No. Uh, f fair enough. I mean, you know, yes, I am heavily invested in Central Vermont. Interestingly, JD, if you actually. You know, and my businesses are my businesses. They're not publicly held. They're privately held. Sure. But we have business interests in many states. And if truth be told, uh, our smallest concentration of real estate and holdings is actually in Vermont. Mm -hmm. The larger part of it is outside of the state of Vermont. Yeah. But I still, you know, this is Barry. This is my hometown. Um, will I scoop up office buildings in Montpelier or Barry mm -hmm. if I think they're a good buy? Yeah, and oh, by the way, they're all public. They're all listed on the MLS, so mm -hmm. maybe other people should start paying attention. So, when folks get on my case a little bit about how heavily invested I am in Barry and in Central Vermont, I look right at them and say, "Why aren't you?" Well, you know, it. anyone well, anyone can do it. It's uh, you know, done, you got to work hard at it every day. You've yeah. done so much for this city, and the, the longest this city's done so much for me. Longest this running has been mayor, a great ride. Longest running mayor. Um, yeah, that and a buck will get you a cup of coffee pretty much anywhere in town. Uh, you know, I what, I what, liked serving. What are I you think. saying? You didn't get rich off being mayor? Is that uh, what you're saying? <laughs> no. 
Um, <laughs> Sorry. There's, th- th- there were a few people that texted me last night, and, and, and I expected this. Ask Lozon if he's going to run for mayor again. What's going on? We're not talking about that. We're not. All right. Yeah. Well, I mean, of course I'm going to, you know, if I, if I, pre- Look, um, if I pre-promote your coming I can't on, imagine, I'm going to ask that. Um, you know, one of your, even though uh, it wasn't exactly complimentary, someone just, you know, um, commented on my, my service to the administration during uh, the pandemic and my uh-huh. continuing service. Um, you know, I think, I think everyone should serve on some level publicly. I uh-huh. think whether it's a, you know, the planning commission or the DRB or, you know, so I, I can't imagine, I can't imagine a life, uh, my life without public service on some level. Okay. Um, you know, the economic mitigation and recovery task force, um, was a lot, took up a lot of time in 2020, not so much in 2021. We're focusing, you know, on different challenges in, sure. in 2021. Um, sure. but I can't imagine a life without service on some level. Yeah. Is the economy starting to? Are we gonna? Are we gonna get through this? Are we gonna rebound? Of course is, we are. Of course we are. It's, um, you know, it, it, it's a question of details. Um, you know, right now, um, you know, we had there is definitely a labor crisis um, right now. Uh-huh. Um, you know, we had it a bit. A lot of people, and some people scream about the three hundred dollar. Um, UI enhancement, and, and they okay. scream that that's why. Well, right. that's that's a small part of it, mm-hmm. but uh, the complexity of our labor challenges right now, uh, first of all, they existed pre-pandemic, right? And and they really existed. You know, employers were struggling, and then of course our economy really shrunk as restaurants, um, you know, closed, servers went home, a lot of people, businesses shrunk a little bit. So that's right. so our economy compressed during the pandemic and then all of a sudden we reopened well it was the same problem that had existed two years previously yes it was somewhat exacerbated by the ui enhancement um probably on an equal level Mm -hmm. there were a lot of people who left the workforce they were just pre-retirement age and Mm -hmm. we're trying to drill down on those numbers now yeah and there were folks who were sort of pre-retirement age and they went through a year of staying home not seeing their kids not seeing their grandkids and they just took a hard look and said i want my life to be more than this and okay so i make 150 dollars less a month if i retire now Mm -hmm. well the hell with that i miss my kids (laughs) i miss my grandkids i'll suck it up i'd rather have my the company of my children and grandkids than the 150 bucks and they yeah. made that choice so yeah. so it's you know it's a complex problem it's not you know if if anyone thinks that because the ui enhancement is ended that all of a sudden this is going to get incredibly better and we're going to have five people applying for every open position you're wrong you better rethink that position it's not going to work that way wow so it's going to take us a while um i think resettling uh refugees is mm. an excellent start um, you know, we, we just got word that Vermont will be hosting uh, 100 refugees and relocating them to Vermont. I yeah. think that's a wonderful thing. Well, that's been in the pipe for a little while, but I think last yeah. night it, it really came it was to the surface that it was, yeah. yeah that it's, so, it's, you know, um, look forward to that and, and look forward, I mean, look forward to welcoming anyone to our workforce looking just looking for a better life well listen we have a lot of people watching this morning and comments coming <laughs> comments coming in i'm uh, sorry to disappoint you everyone uh, already uh and raylene if you got anything hot throw it at us um <laughs> yeah uh yeah i am a bit of a lightning rod tom listen i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna hand this to you this is a this is a <laughs> highlighter i'm gonna give this to you Why? if i if i ask you anything that you're uncomfortable with throw this at me Okay. There, there it look, right it's there. lying. Look, no, I'm just saying it's right there. It's within reach. Right? I, I'm not going to throw anything. Michael Booten. Uh, oh Mike- no. <laughs> Good, what, what good morning, Michael. Well, he's, got, he's got his hand on the highlighter already. Look no, I don't. Uh, he just uh, he just wrote a comment here. I'd love to hear a list of the properties that he has bought and made worse. I don't hold my breath waiting for that because he improves the properties. So, um, and so do a lot of people. Yeah. You know, what's going on? Maybe the... maybe I'm a little more colorful. Maybe I'm a little more out there. What's maybe... going on with the, with the Bonacorsi building? What's happening with it? Oh, yeah. That has been a new roof. 
uh, finally, thank yeah. you, Chris. Chris, uh, Till Dark Roofing, you know, what a guy, yeah. man. He, he just gets it done every day. Yeah. Yeah, we had a little issue there. Um, that building is really going to have to be a gut, gut rehab, and, oh. and we're honored to have it. The Bonacorsi building, yeah, Bonacorsi family, rather, just, you know, really one of the one of the key people in this community for decades. And matter of fact, uh, Virgilio was a, a former mayor and served the city well. So we purchased that property um, and it needed a new roof, 12,000 square feet of roof. Um, so that was back in April, contacted Chris. He ordered up the poly ISO, you know, you insulate, it's called poly ISO. Oh. It's sheets of, well, let's just call it styrofoam because most people oh. can relate to that, but it's a little more complex than that. And it's an insulation that you put over the, the existing structure and then you put a rubber roof over it. Um, so we ordered up the poly ISO. The order went through. Uh, half of it came in. We only wanted half because when you get all that poly ISO up on the roof, it's hard to work around it. Mm -hmm. you know. And it, So you put half on the roof at a time, and then you do half the roof, and then you get the other half. Well, you know, the first half of the poly ISO came in within weeks, got it up on the roof. Chris, Chris and his guys are going at it hard every day. And all of a sudden in June, he calls the supplier and says, well, I'd like the other half of my order. And they're like, uh, yeah, about that. <laughs> and uh, so we waited until August. So, so you had uh, to run over to Nelson's and get some tarps. Uh, <laughs> no. Uh, you know, it's a tough building. Um, but obviously, we couldn't start the inside renovation, which we also planned for this summer. Okay. Because we didn't have the poly ISO. What's going on inside there? Um, it really just a gut renovation. Um, you know, it, it, when you buy, sometimes when you buy older buildings, um, there are some components that are serviceable and components that are not. Um, the approach we've always taken is we, we really do a deep dive into the building. So new plumbing, new electrical. I mean, we just do everything new. Um, and then you don't have to worry about it. You don't have high maintenance costs. And, sure. The building is serviceable again. So that is a great building, um, you know, great location. But like a lot of things, I mean, we've all experienced this, uh, you know, appliances. I mean, take your pick. Um, we all experienced uh, supply shortages and disruptions during the pandemic. So that was the biggest challenge in 2021. 2020, it was different. Mm -hmm. 2020 was... We were doing some renovations in 2020. We were very careful. People were masked up. Our, our contractors were great. But every once in a while, I'd get a call from one of the contractors, and they would say, one of my guys isn't feeling well, and he's going in to get tested. So you'd have an obligation to notify everyone what was going on, and if you were a close contact. Uh, so we'd shut the job down. Had to. And Yeah. And so we'd shut down for a couple of weeks. Everything, Thankfully, with everything worked out. We never... We didn't have a you know positive case where others were infected, so sure. we're really grateful for that part. But it was just start, stop, start, stop, start, yeah, all course. during 2020. So and many, then so 21, you know, 21 comes around, and we're start, stop for a different reason. Specifically, the supply chain yeah. was just right. sucked. <laughs> La the last time I had the last time I had you on the air here on the Air Now podcast, mm -hmm. I was we were. You know, I was putting a little bit of heat on you that, that uh, there was some discussion that we had about yeah. uh, an indoor grow lap. Uh, <laughs> I listen, you know, yeah, you know, it's it's uh, it's an industry. It's an emerging industry here in Vermont. Uh, I think much like hemp, I I'm, think, you, you know, you've got to remember I'm that. I'm laughing and you're not. Well, because to me, it's just business, um, you, you know, um, I don't think there are a lot of people um, who who think, you know, everybody's going to get rich on yeah. growing marijuana. Mm -hmm. I think people are going to make a living growing marijuana. But I think much like the hemp industry, if you think about the marijuana industry, um, you can't bring marijuana interstate. So if you think about where the marijuana that is grown is going to be consumed, it's going to be consumed right here in Vermont. Mm -hmm. We're a small state, 600,000 yeah. people. Um, you know, we want to avoid some states um, actually experienced an abundance of supply. Yeah, Massachusetts um, was doing very well. But look at the, yeah. regu look at the regulation uh, out in California for medicinal and recreational. Mm -hmm. My God, is the fight huge out there. Yeah, so, 
you know, do I think it's going to be a good industry for Vermont? Yeah, but I don't, you know, but it's a very different industry. When people sometimes liken it to our craft beer industry, our distillate industry, Mm -hmm. that is a very different business model because with craft beer and distillate, you can you can bring it cross state lines uh-huh. with you know marijuana it doesn't work that way your uh-huh. market is limited to your state right so uh, I think it's going to be a good industry I think it's going to be a solid industry I think you know the the board currently regulating it I think they're being thoughtful in how they're going about it I think they're doing a good job uh-huh. but so you know if we can get involved on some level um yeah happy to do that i mean just like we would just like we've supported restaurants and retail sure. and office and yeah you know just another industry sure um listen let's and i reached out to brian judd yesterday and asked him if he could either come in by uh, or call in by phone or come in in person uh, to to chat with us this morning, and uh, he's in an area where he he doesn't have any cell service. He's mm-hmm. he's uh, on an island, so uh, we will extend that invite. <laughs> we'll extend on that an invite. island. Well, well, he's lucky he's, him. He's uh, he's taken a little bit of R and R. Good for him. Um, so, but we've extended that invite for him to come back. Mm-hmm. But uh, so he's not here. Uh, but we are. I, I did tell him that we are going to be uh, talking about him. So what happened? I, I don't and, know that. Yeah, I don't it, know that we'll be talking specifically about him. I think part of the problem is sometimes we make things right. About like, a like the comment from your, sure. uh, you know, from your email yeah. uh, earlier on in the podcast. Right. We make it too much about people. Yeah. Yeah. And um, well, it, so you want to know what happened? I mean, but, first but, of all, but, but, other than but Saturday Brian morning, is, Brian is front and center with with this with this yeah. story of what well, happened. Well, and as well, he should be. I mean, he did make. Uh, you know, he did make the initial request, um, you know, prior to Saturday morning, I never had a direct conversation with Brian. Yeah. He and I never spoke Not about amazing. that. Uh, I so don't, let, I don't know that I even, I'm sure I could find his cell number, but, um, so let, let's break it down for folks that are maybe are not familiar with what we're talking about 20 years ago. <laughs> Who? Who on earth isn't familiar with what? You'd be, Holy you, cow! This you'd thing be surpri- took on a life you'd, of its you'd own. You'd be surprised how many how many viewers and listeners we have uh, from out of state. Okay. September eleventh, twenty years ago, uh, Jim Ward, who at the time was a city councilor, uh, had the the idea of creating a, a huge American flag that was going to be pieced together uh, by three foot by three foot sections of flag. Uh, all sewn together, which uh, Spalding High School and uh, Barry Town School both mm-hmm. uh, did and accomplished and made this huge flag that was personalized, customized mm-hmm. for our community. It was a Correct. huge flag. Uh, separate from that, uh, he also commissioned a very large 20 by 30 American flag to be strung up on a cable above North Main Street uh, in the days and weeks following September 11th, 2001. And it was a huge flag and it looked amazing and it was just the talk of the town. It was Mm -hmm. beautiful, beautiful. The flag was taken down, folded up, put it away in Jim Ward's closet. 20 years later, Brian Judd gets in touch with Jim Ward and says, let's get the flag out, dust it off, clean it up, fix it up, tighten it up, make sure it's, it's, it looks good, um, that it's, it's, uh, you know, it's not frayed or anything. And let's have, let's, let's examine, let's have a, a good look at this cable above the street, make sure that uh, it's, its integrity is there, that it's, it's structurally sound, that it can hold the weight of this flag. 20 years has passed. Let's hire an engineer and consultants to come in, have a look at this, present it to city council. Uh, over the course of four weeks, he did that. Um, and it was very much uh, uh, assuming that it was very much considered because there was a lot of listening that was going mm-hmm. on by, by, by city council. Mm-hmm. And then uh, in the 11th hour, uh, the Tuesday before September 11th, uh, surprisingly, it was uh, the kibosh was put on this. Right. What, what happened? Well, I mean, uh, Councillor Booten made a motion to allow uh, Mr. Judd to fly the flag or fly a smaller flag. Um, 
uh, Council Bruton's motion was really to take it out of the hands of the council and sort of have, have the council say, yes, we're okay with this idea, but you have to work through the city manager, um, Steve McKenzie. And that's not uncommon. I mean, that's, sure. you know, normally um, when the council is faced with a decision like that, that's normally what you do is right. say, well, you can take care of this administratively. You don't need to be at the council. Here are our concerns. Yeah. Uh, and as long as you address those concerns and the city manager, who we trust, signs right. off on it, we're good with it. Right. And the motion died for lack of a second. Uh, there, so the motion that he made was not seconded. And the council did not give their permission for the flag to be flown uh, over Main Street. Um, so I was surprised uh, by that decision as well. I had followed it somewhat, to be honest, J.D., I had followed it somewhat not not really closely um when the, when that happened um and and I, i'll apologize for brian I, I respect i i try to respect everybody i know uh, you i do. do uh i know some people would disagree with that statement um but i try to um i don't always succeed <laughs> um my first reaction was what did he do what the heck did he say to them because, listen, I don't always agree with Brian on everything. Um, but I, I, my first reaction is, what did he do? Did, did he challenge them? Did he, you know, what did he do to upset them to the point where they, they wouldn't grant this request? And he had obviously worked hard on it. So I went back and I watched all of the meetings three times before I made any phone calls. Before In the previous I did, weeks? Yes. I watched three times. And I kept looking for that moment where he challenged them. I went back to the very beginning. And I can really relate to this. I miss my dad every day. Uh, I lost my dad in December of 19. Uh, Brian recently lost his dad, Bruce. Uh, and, you know, Bruce, what a guy. What a guy. To think of um, all of the people that he comforted, Bruce comforted, um, when they lost someone. Um, I just always enjoyed Bruce Judd. He was a consummate gentleman. And so Brian relayed, relayed that to the council, how important the flag was to his dad and how important his dad was to him. And then, the, and then as the council expressed legitimate concerns, um, Brian would address them. Obviously, the structural integrity of the mounting points and, and different things like that. Um, at one point, uh, and you know I'm the biggest Steve McKenzie fan in the world. Um, Barry's going to have a hard time replacing Steve McKenzie. At one point during the discussion, Steve McKenzie made, right or wrong, because this is a council-level decision, Steve made the comment, he said, I can't imagine the council not approving this. Right. And, and no one, and I'm not saying they had an obligation to, um, but no one said, well, not so fast, Steve. First of all, this isn't before you, it's before the council, and please don't speak. You know, no one said that. So the, the moment passed, and I think the expectation was, uh, Mr. Judd, if you, if, if you check these boxes, we're okay with this. That was the expectation. Um, reality turned out to be, you know, a little different. And um, so as I, as I watched the meetings, you know, three times, <laughs> start to finish, um, my opinion was that they didn't approve it because it was Brian Judd. Because Brian Judd um, certainly holds a different political opinion than many on the council. But personally, I found his request to be sincere. He was thorough. He was lucid and respectful. respectful. Absolutely. And, you know, so there's this moment, J.D., where, and and I'm not saying, look, (laughs) I've made as many mistakes as anybody. Um, But there were times on when I served the city where folks that I didn't see eye to eye with would come in. And if they presented something that was sincere and, and something that was worthy of approval, I always looked at that as an opportunity. You know, there's always a Canyon sometimes, and especially nowadays, um, people who hold different viewpoints, everything is very black and white. And there's, if you've got someone who holds a different opinion, there's a big Canyon between you. And I felt like the council had the opportunity to narrow that Canyon. To, to look at Brian and say, you know, Mr. Judd, we, we don't agree with some of your beliefs and positions. Um, but, you know, this is, a, this is a lucid, 
thoughtful, respectful request, and we are going to support you. And so there's that opportunity to make that canyon smaller, and, and they didn't. And, and, a, and a city councilor even posted, um, you know, so that was my suspicion. And a city councilor even posted uh, on social media after, well, after the decision that the reason the motion wasn't seconded is because it was Brian Judd. Well, Teddy wrote that. I don't, look, I'm not I'm, interested in calling anybody out uh, but, and creating more devices. I'm just telling you, no, you asked me a question. Yeah, no, I did. And I'm answering it. You know, honestly. Yeah, yeah I, know, I know you are, but, um, but, but I can, I can, I can call him out because I have it right here in front of me. And there's and, no listen. Tom, there's no Tom, need to call anyone it's out. Public, People make, I but respect, it's public. You know, it's on a public platform. It's on Facebook. You know, Councillor Shambiel, I respect the hell out of her because she answered the question. Okay, she's not required to vote yes or no. Her vote is her vote. Okay, her constituents can accept it or not, but it's her vote. And so I want to say thank you to her for explaining her vote. Now, maybe people didn't like her explanation. Well, that's too bad. <laughs> but I admire her courage in explaining her vote. She explained it to her constituents, and I find that admirable. So uh, when I watched those meetings, I said, you know, my God, my belief is, and it was later confirmed, they didn't approve this because it was Brian Judd. And I just thought, what a missed opportunity to look at someone and say, you know, Brian, I don't agree with you, uh, but we're going to approve this because we find it to be thorough, respectful, and you're making it, in our opinion, for the right reasons. Um, and, and that opportunity was missed. And I felt badly for Brian. Maybe, you know, and you can, you can maybe all you want. Uh, you know, maybe he was, I, I certainly didn't appreciate the fact that Brian sued the city and, and, and alluded to the fact that, let me tell you something. Carol Dawes will get aggressive if you ever, you don't even joke about elections with Carol Dawes. <laughs> I learned that early on. No one that I have ever met cares about the integrity of an election more than Carol Dawes. She has done an incredible job for this city. So did I appreciate that? No. But, you know, in my opinion, he was trying to do something nice, something worthy, something unifying. Uh -huh. You know, I didn't see... Uh, and there was not, you know, in the aftermath when we did raise the flag, um, you know, there were no other flags flying but the American flag. That was the only flag that flew, uh, you know, at that at that moment. And the people who attended attended only to honor the, the those lost uh, on 9-11 yes. 20 years ago. So uh, so. Uh, getting back to that, you know, th so that's kind of the lead up to it. And I'm sorry, that's a really long <laughs> explanation. But I tried to be thorough in, you know, I didn't want. So when I had watched the meetings, and again, that's my belief. You know, people can post or whatever and yeah. not like it, but that's my belief. And like I said, later confirmed. So, well, uh, so I made the call. So, and the person I called, because he's one of the smartest guys I know in terms of assembling something, uh, Byron and Charlie Atwood at DMS Machine. So great guys. So I called Byron and said, um, first of all, I explained the flag, how much it, he said, yeah, I'm familiar with it, you know, how much it weighed. And I said, now you have a man lift, don't you? And he said, yeah, we have a 60 footer. I said, okay, can I rent that? The first thing I want to make sure, Byron, can you fly this flag safely mm -hmm. from a man lift? Mm -hmm. uh, and he's like, yeah, absolutely you can. And, you know, they're engineers. So they mm -hmm. did the math and, and said, yeah, you can, we'll have to fabricate some brackets mm -hmm. and we'll have to have a big pole. And so, you know, they really did all the heavy lifting. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but the only thing that Byron said to me is he said, uh, but Tom, I won't accept your money to do this. It's, you know, I'm part of this community too. And I believe that was the wrong decision, so I'm, I, I'm not going to charge you for this. Uh -huh. And so I did ask Byron. I said, well, you know, thank you, uh, first of all, but there's a cost to everything. So um, I appreciate the gesture. Would you, could you keep track of what the bill would have been and let me know because I'd like to make a donation to the 9-11 Memorial Fund in the name of DMS? And, what, you know, the guys that they call the Men of Steel at DMS. And... Um, you know, so that's the story. And, and I never spoke directly to, I never spoke directly to Brian. So through another acquaintance who I knew knew Brian, I just sent a text message and I said, look, I've done this. Um, 
So this opportunity is there. This was Brian's project, not mine. So if Brian would like to have the flag at DMS on Friday morning so they could begin the fabrication process, Mm -hmm. um, they will have the lift uh, at City Hall Park at 9 a.m. on Saturday. And you can do this. But, you know, it's Brian's choice. He can take advantage of it or not. And, uh, you know, so he did. So I never, you know, I never spoke directly to Brian Judd until Saturday morning, just yeah. before the, you know, memorial service. And it was a beautiful memorial it, service. It, it was, it just was be- a beautiful service. It was a beautiful day, just like it was it, 20 yes, years ago. Yes. It, it, you know, that day. Exactly. It was the same type of, you know, not quite fall. But, it, you know, there was a little bit of chill in the air. Blue <laughs> and, uh, sky. Yeah, it, it was very, yeah, as I thought about it, it was, yeah. it was very much like that day. So, and, um, and, you know. And it, a very I, profound I, moment for a lot of folks that were in City Hall Park that day. It was a really powerful time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, for and those res- of us And who, respectful. Of course it was respectful, you know, and I. And not political. Wasn't concerned, no. Uh you know, I mean, I'd be lying if I didn't see the potential, you know, and I said a quick prayer that morning and said, you know, man, <laughs> you know, because there's just certain things you don't disrespect with any sort of ulterior motive. And that event certainly was one of them. Right. And, you know, so I'd be lying if I didn't recognize the possibility. And I said a quick prayer that morning and said, you know, I hope people understand and I hope people honor why we're here yeah. and they don't try to take it sideways. And, um, you know, no one did, Yeah, you know, no one did. And, uh, you know, the mayor was there, gave some very moving remarks. Councilor Booten was there. Uh, you know, I appreciated them. Matter of fact, the mayor had other plans. Um, and, uh, so we canceled those plans so that he could, uh, be there and make some remarks. And, you know, as I've, you know, sometimes people, um, you know, the mayor's gotten swept up in a few comments. Uh, and let me just say this. No one respects the American flag or the right to fly it more than Lucas Herring. Uh, his father is a veteran. Yeah. Uh, he has volunteered countless hours, holidays, uh, you know, down at the American Legion. Yes, he has. And, um, you know, I, I just hold him in the highest regard. I'm glad he was there. I was... Uh, I, it didn't surprise <clears throat> me. It, it, you know, it didn't surprise me. And as a former mayor, uh, I admire his courage. I understand, you know, and I understand and respect that others on the council may feel differently. But, you know, as mayor, you're always looking to keep your council unified. And sometimes if you have to take a position um, that is contrary to what a majority of the council believes, that can be hard yeah. as a mayor. And, right. and uh, you know, so... So he did that, and I appreciate that. And, and you know, getting back, to, um, getting back to the lack of a second for that motion, um, yeah, I think the reason bothered me, uh, how it became very personal bothered me. Was it shameful? Not going to go there. Okay. Look, there's no, there's no value in, in shitting on people. <laughs> I see, go back, people have asked me repeatedly, What do you think, for example, of Donald Trump? If you want to know what I think of Donald Trump, you have to go back to 2015 to one social media post that I made during the primary. Mm -hmm. Okay? There was one. Mm -hmm. I don't repeat myself. I don't have time. I'm a busy guy. So, but what that lack of a second took me back to was Paul Poirier. Mm -hmm. Uh, Remember Paul? I, and I, I haven't heard yes. from or seen Paul in years, and I hope Paul's enjoying retirement, and I hope him, him and Leslie are really happy and healthy. And if, if anyone could please <clears throat> make sure Paul watches and, and, this and, podcast. And I hope he does, because, um, you know, I had and have so much respect for Paul Poirier. Now, Paul and I frequently found ourselves on different sides of issues. Um, but I would think back to Paul's service on the council, and there would be occasion when a a city councilor made a motion and there was no second, there was dead silence. And Paul would look at that councilor and he'd say something to the effect that uh, there's no way in hell I'm voting for your motion. I'm not going to support it, but I'm going to second it. Because you obviously want to talk about it and I believe in having a thorough debate. And Paul would second that motion as a courtesy 
and let the debate play out. And then, you know, true to his word, Paul usually wouldn't support the motion. Right. Um, but there was always that that level of respect. And, uh, you know, J.D., to the extent, you know, I'm sorry, to the extent I've ever added to that, I think when you step away from public service and then you watch others do it, um, sometimes I have those moments where I look at things and say, you know, holy cow, did I do that? Yeah. And I probably did, yeah. you know, during my service. But right now, um, these are just so such divisive times. They are. You know, more than ever, we need to show folks a little bit of uh, courtesy. Yes. <sighs> Sherilyn. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Should was, I sing Kumbaya was, now? Yeah, no. Uh, <laughs> Sherilyn was, uh, we were talking about this, and, and she was like, you know, this would have played out differently if this was in England, in, in Parliament. I mean, people would have been hopping over desks and <laughs> chairs would have been thrown and hot Parliament coffee. can be awesome sometimes. It's hot, like hot coffee. It's be like celebrity the air. death match, man. Uh, it's like, no. it's, I, I, you know, no. of course, you know, we probably do the same thing, you know, you know, in the U.S. But uh, yeah, right. you know, in uh, J.D., listen, I, I saw all of the comments. I, you know, didn't join in, uh, not going to. Um, and I understand, you know, some people uh, expressed concern that they said, well, when the insurrectionists attacked the Capitol on January 6th, yeah. um, you know, the American flag was sort of their symbol. Well, listen, they're not stealing my flag. Yeah, you're right. You know, that was abhorrent. Yeah. Uh, that was un-American. They weren't patriots. That, that's right. just my opinion. Sorry. But I'm going to say. Uh, yeah, but I'm, I'm gonna, entitled to it. I'm and, and I'll be damned if I'm going to say, okay, then I'm not flying the American flag because they tried to steal it. I, I think this is probably the best soundbite of the podcast, right? <laughs> no, I'm serious. Right there. You just well, said it. It's just how I feel. I'm going to say this. Brian Judd is not an insurrectionist. He's the furthest thing from it. He I, I, he's I a, hope I didn't imply that. Because, no. He's, a, I, I, he's I, a patriot, and he he's, he's an American, and he's, an, he's a veteran, and he's very passionate about his country. He is. He's he not is. an insurrectionist. I hope I didn't imply that no. because, uh, no, I don't no, believe other, that to be have. true. Others have. Uh, you know, I, I realize that others have, including a city councilor uh, in a, I mean, I saw the post. You know, I read the post. Uh, I don't These think, posts, I don't think it is appropriate. And quite frankly, my reaction to that post was, who the hell are you to decide who gets a platform? You know, we call that censorship. And, and, you know, you don't decide that as, as a city council. The citizens of Barrie decide. They decide who gets to stand up on a soapbox. Because if you stand there and nobody's listening to you, you might as well get down. So, you know, that's not your choice. Right. And, you know, the name calling, I, you know, I can tell you, I, I've never had, I mean, I haven't had a ton of conversations with Brian. I've never had an unpleasant conversation. Yeah. He certainly makes his views known. Yeah. And yes, he is passionate about it and, and who isn't? Right. I mean, you know, most of the time we can get passionate about our views, but um but, 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 you know, I've I've never had a conversation with him that wasn't respectful. And regardless, you know, he's taken positions I don't agree with. I've taken positions I'm sure he doesn't agree with. So what? I'm talking about this moment in time with him sitting before the council as a citizen, requesting to fly a flag, doing it respectfully, seeing no ulterior motive, jumping through the hoops, checking the boxes that you asked him to check, and then at the last minute you pull the football because it's Brian Judd. Not cool. And and listen, I'm I, you know I, I don't want to get so you don't get me all riled up. No, I'm just saying. But <laughs> li- listen, all of these these comments that are coming in, mostly from Teddy on City Council, um, are public comments. Listen, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna I'm listen, not gonna Tom Ted, I'm not gonna go away the from the counselor. That. Now I won't. He hide and it. I hold very different views on things. I admire his passion. I don't believe that he has ulterior. Those are his beliefs. And yes, it's okay. But, <laughs> but to say that counselors with an S on the end. Yes. As in more than one. I plural, understand. Have received threats of violence. And I'm quoting here. 
threatening phone calls in the, quote, middle of the night, including death threats. That never happened. It never happened, Tom. The and, death, and no, I, the death threats part. And he, Tom, and no, hey, 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 he corrected that. And he said he corrected that. So, you know, come on, yes, let's, be, he, let's be fair. He did, <laughs> he did. But you can't, Tom, you can't do this and then immediately start. There were, there were certainly. Playing the victim card. There were certain, I you can't under, do that, Tom. I, <laughs> I don't think we got to whip everybody. It's early in the morning. It's I too hope, early to be I whipped hope. into a frenzy. But we, Look, we both first have seen, all, the, we both have seen hope, the police report. Um, there's nothing, there's no language in here that's threatening. I, I hope None. we can, all I would say for Barry is, and I think for the most part we do, let's express uh, our differences civilly. Uh, you know, let's be civil about it. Because whether I agree with you or not, they're your, they're your beliefs. Right. And I have to, you know, you have to respect that, J.D. And, and so some of the comments that I saw on Facebook, you know, there's no reason to tell somebody to leave the country, for God's sakes. I mean, you got a different belief, you know. Like I said, I admire the counselor for stating clearly why, why she did not second the motion. I admire her for that. And but I to, thank her for that because she explained her vote, which is better than sitting there in silence and just... Tom, I, here's where you and I disagree. And we can, <laughs> we can wrestle right now if you want to get in the ring. I, I'm just saying, no. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't have... I mean, I'm just being honest here. Mm -hmm. I don't have respect for someone who says that they feel that they've been held hostage by our American flag. That is not what she said. She said she felt, and, and I could be wrong, but when I watched the meeting, I thought what she said was she felt held hostage by the discussion. And I've felt that way myself at times on the council, uh, where y there was a decision before you and you knew there, you knew that regardless of your decision, there was going to be controversy. And sometimes was she put you up wished... To, was she put up to, the, to, to saying that? Do you think that there was some, um, you know... Uh, uh, it wouldn't be fair. A to, little bit of a... It wouldn't, wouldn't be fair to speculate because that would be a blatant violation of the Vermont Open Meeting Law. And I am, abs Why was and I am absolutely not going to speculate because I wasn't there. That's not fair to accuse people of something. All right. Do Unless know, you know. Do we know, why, <laughs> do we know why some counselors weren't there? Do we know why some counselors didn't second um, the motion? Why I, didn't the I other don't know. <laughs> I'm not their yeah. keeper. I'm just wondering Look, why they were crickets. I'm not going to get, I, I, you know. I just want, do you wonder why there were crickets? <laughs> do you wonder why there were? The... The explanation that was given and the way I read the counselor's post was the counselor was speaking for all of the counselors. That's the way the post read. And he was explaining that the motion, and he explained the reason, you know, this is the reason because it was Mr. Judd and we didn't want to give him a platform and he's an insurrectionist. And, you know, so this is why the motion didn't get a second. And yeah. it certainly, if you read the post, it sounded like he was speaking for all of them. Um, I had heard from another counselor. She stated her reasons clearly. Now, whether I agreed with them or not yeah. doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, and I'm not going to put her down for it. It's unfortunate, after all the work mm -hmm. that Mr. Judd has put into having this cable secured. Yeah, that, these are very different discussions. That the flag after didn't all of fly. the work, I felt, like, I felt like the expectation was certainly there that the council would approve this if he checked all the boxes. I absolutely believe that the motion was not seconded and the motion was not supported because it was Mr. Judd. It was Brian Judd making the request. Um, oh. it, you know, so, so those are my beliefs. You know, like me or hate me for them, those are my beliefs. And that's why I did what I did. Yeah. But I tried, again, I tried to be thorough. I called professionals who do fabrication. My first right. question was, sure. can we do this safely? Because safely. if you can't, right. you know, big gust of wind comes up, would it ever topple the lift? And, right. you know, and they're like, uh, no. <laughs> you know, can you secure it safely to the, the man bucket sure. so that no matter what, you know, safety is the first priority. 
And if we can check that box, then, okay, let's move forward. Now let's go to the logistics of making it happen. So in retrospect, um, I have no regrets about making that phone call. I have no regrets about, uh, uh, you know, arranging for that, and I never will. Yeah. As the former mayor, do you ever do you look back in in the rearview mirror and see city council as being a council that is capable of tackling and dealing with hard, hard issues? This is one of them. Maybe homelessness would be another one. Yep. How do you feel about that? Do you, are they capable of this council? Yeah. You know, J.D., I go through life every day believing we are all capable of amazing things. You know, the tragedy of um, competency, the tragedy of rising to the occasion is that it normally takes a crisis to get us to do it. it and, you know, for example, uh, the few times that Barry flooded, I was never more proud of the folks at the city, of our city staff, public works, uh, you know, the, the, our EMTs, our firemen, our police officers. Man, you know, it, it, it sucked that it took a crisis, that it took a city with three feet of mud to recognize just how well they could perform in a crisis, but that's exactly what happened. So do I think this council can perform and make the hard decisions? Um, you know, that's up to them. I personally, I think I think people people are capable of anything. You've done some great things in your life during that time when Barry flooded, uh, you know, the radio station and, and all of the time that you were on the air. That was sort of the lifeline for folks who, um, you know, who needed to know what was going on and needed to know where help was available. So, you know, in times of crisis, you know, 20 years ago on 9-11. People stepped up, and yeah. it's uh, so. Yeah, I think we. Why just, not? Why can't this council? We just had a community forum that was massive. Yeah, Vermont Council on Rural Development. Development. Yeah, um, it was huge, and we have more information coming out. We have a big meeting coming up at the Barry Auditorium. Yeah. Uh, very soon, in a couple of days, uh, where we're kind of trying to condense all this information and and put it together into an action of uh, a play yeah yeah um of what we're going to do the council has got a lot of work to do there's a lot of issues it's not well, just drugs wait, well, wait. it's not just we've, homelessness we've all got a lot of work to do <laughs> it's not look you know you can't just say hey it's the council's problem you know yes they are elected and and they're they certainly take the lead on it and that's appropriate but come on we all you know we all have a little heavy lifting to do yeah uh you know and and like Mr. Judd, when the council makes good decisions, I will be the first one to thank them for it. And it's it's not an easy job. No. It's not an easy job. What about you? Uh, you think about it every day. To this day, J.D., well, yeah. I still react to sirens. Sure. Not not in a weird way. <laughs> not sure. like, I'm, I'm not trying to no. – not like that. I understand. But uh, when, when, you, when, I, when I step down as mayor – uh, when I would hear sirens, because normally if I would hear, like not like one siren, but if I would hear multiple sirens, the next thing I would be doing is texting dispatch, you know, what's going on. Uh, I mean, not not when I wasn't mayor, when I was mayor. And, uh, you know, it, it, it took a while for that. It just gets my attention to this day. When I hear multiple sirens, I just pause for a moment. And then you think, uh, okay, not not my place. Uh, so it, it's a hard job and I think, and I, yes, I think this council is absolutely capable of, uh, making hard decisions and making the right decisions, but I think, you know, they're going to, they need to hear from people and they, you know, and we need to do some of the heavy lifting too. And they also need to know that Barry's listening. Barry always listens. I mean, I can tell you from experience, because I made plenty of mistakes, if you question whether they're listening, go ahead and make a mistake. <laughs> you'll, oh, no. you'll hear about it really quickly, and you'll figure out, wow, they're listening every day. Uh, Mr. McKenzie, yes. um, hopefully we'll get him in here. We'll sit him down. And... I don't know that you ever will. <laughs> well, we tried. You called him. He didn't call you back. Um, he didn't. He I didn't. Know. No, Steve is not. I know he's not a, a lights Steve and camera. Steve is, is the, he's not a lights and camera yeah. kind of guy. I he know. is totally apolitical. I get it. Uh, you know, he is so hardworking. Um, 
boy, he's going to be tough. To we, we have a lot of work to find someone yeah. who's going to fill some big shoes. Yeah. Uh, you were not invited to the table. <laughs> Now we're going there. What? What's that all about? There's no chair with your name on it. What's going on? I mean, Man, I'm going to start calling you Howard Stern or something. No, I'm, just, I'm, I'm putting, putting the Look, heat on you, buddy. Uh, again, you know, we, we talked about uh, all you have to do is walk around town and mention my name. And I can almost guarantee you uh, there will be very few people who will just shrug and won't have an opinion. They will either they will either jump right down my throat, or they will praise me more than I deserve to be praised. Okay, there's really no in between with me. Understand? It's uh, you know, it's right side, left side, and 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 that's it. Uh, there's no middle. And um, yeah, so I and I believe that I was not chosen. So. Early on when the city uh, said, hey, we're going to have this uh, manager search committee, they're going to assist the council, uh, they're going to put, uh, you know, we're going to, they're going to choose, I think they're going to narrow it down to four names, as I recall, and then forward those names to the council. The council will appropriately would conduct the final interviews, again, with Mr. McKenzie's uh, assistance, I'm sure. And I hope Carol Dawes' assistance, because she has a really unique perspective, because she is the only, she is the elected official who works most closely in the same building, you know, 12 hours a day with the city manager. So I hope they allow her a seat at the table as well. So I submitted my name. Um, I chose, I, I was part of the team that chose Mr. McKenzie to be our city manager. Prior to that, I was part of the team that chose John Craig uh, to be our city manager. Both Mr. Craig uh, ended up resigning as city manager because he was relocating uh, to be closer to family. I think he served the city well and with distinction. I think there's no argument that Mr. McKenzie certainly has. So I submitted my name saying I, I have a lot of institutional experience working with successful city managers. And um, right. so I showed up. Um, there was a deadline. I got my uh, my letter of intent, I guess you'd call it, in before the deadline. Yeah. There were a certain number of candidates. I w- received an email from the assistant to the city manager saying, you must show up on this day to introduce yourself to the council. Yeah. Uh, and, and so I did. Uh, you know, I did as I was told and waited through the council meeting and at the appropriate time introduced myself and explained why I felt I was qualified and why I wanted to serve on the on the committee. Um, not less than half of the candidates who were sent the email saying, hey, show up, actually mm-hmm. showed up. I was one who did. Uh, and, you know, I saw the handwriting on the wall when all of a sudden the council started to move the goalposts <laughs> saying, well, well, we'll give them a second. Maybe they, uh, yeah. I was going to say this sounds like, musical. So, like you know, it sounds listen, like, it sounds like musical chairs and you, um, you ended up. So, playing. so do I believe it was personal? I know it was personal. Uh, well, there are other counselors who felt I should have. So I know it was JD. That's fine. You know, that's fine. Listen, I've. I've had an amazing amount of success, and by success, I never define my success by the size of my wallet, just like you don't judge a man's character by the size of his wallet, and you don't ever confuse the two. Um, But I've had an amazing amount of success. Um, You know, Central Vermont has been so good to me, I hope, um, I hope on some level, you know, I've given back, but, but... when I think about everything that I do in business, business, the companies that I run, the projects that I run, um, you know, if I got upset, if, if I held it in my heart every time somebody said something or did something or took a shot at me, shit, I, I would have quit 25 years ago. You don't, you don't go through life holding hate in your heart. And, and there was Amazing. a period of time where I did. And, and you don't. You let it go and you move on. This council did not, in terms of my experience, so I, they wouldn't even explain the decision, which is actually required in the Vermont Open Meeting Law. Yeah. First of all, I question whether they can go into executive session. This is an ad hoc committee. It is not a permanent committee. It has one charge. It dissolves. Uh, you can go into executive session to discuss the appointment of a public official or employee. I think it's a stretch to call people who serve on this ad hoc committee public officials. Uh, but regardless, they made the choice they made. Um, you know, 
executive session isn't designed to prevent someone's feelings from being hurt. So if somebody on the council just said, Tom Lozon's an ass, and I'm not appointing him to anything. Or what was well, it, move on from Lozon? Yeah, or we got to move on from Tom Lozon. Well, good luck with that. Uh, <laughs> it, you know, anyway, so, so you know, I, I, you know, again, J.D., but the Vermont Open Meeting Law requires you to state your reasons. Once you make that decision, you've right. got to vote it in open session. Right. And it's right in the statute. You have to clearly explain, explain the reason for your vote. Yeah. So as I looked at who was chosen, and there were a lot of fine people. Yep. Um, and I said, well, you know, gee, why wasn't I? I was the only candidate who actually participated in the last two city manager searches. So, in, you know, so if their reason was... Um, Gee, we wanted people who hadn't served the city before uh -huh. to do it. Well, there were folks who were appointed who were certainly serving the city in other capacities and other committees, so it couldn't have been that reason. Uh -huh. uh, if it, you know, so again, um, everybody knows it. I know it. Uh, Council Rudin certainly knows it. <laughs> uh, it was because it was me. And but you know that is a dangerous, dangerous thing. You know, I was talking about Brian. And when people would come into the council when I served and when you have the opportunity to make that canyon narrower, um, you seize that opportunity. Um, council can make any decision they make. But when you start making. Did they drop the ball that night by not trying uh, to bridge that them. gap? Why don't you have some of them in and ask? I've, I've and asked. why don't you put them on the. I've asked. Well, I don't. Uh, I'll let them answer for themselves. OK. You know, I told you what I think. Yeah. And I'll let them speak for themselves it's okay. I mean, it's okay. I'm sure, you know, I'm, believe me, I will be watching this process closely. I live here. And, and I believe the council will make a good choice. Um, there are some folks I've already encouraged to apply uh, because I think they would make men and women who would make a great city manager. Um, so, you know, we'll, we'll see how it plays out. But again, I'm not going to be all upset over it <laughs> yeah. you know they made their choice mm -hmm. and they have the right to vote but i think if you start putting personalities into it and you say well i'm not going to look at their qualifications i'm not going to look at what they might bring to the discussion right. i'm just going to look at their first and last name and my opinion starts and ends there boy that's you know then you get into incompetence gross incompetence and i hope we're not there i we saw a little taste of it um, in that and with Brian, the decision about the flag, um, I think the council's council members have probably had some time to self reflect a bit. I've been there where, you know, I made plenty of bad decisions and then, you know, in the weeks and months that follow, you have a chance to self reflect and you figure out, you know, I don't want to do that ever again. That was wrong of me. Um, so maybe they're, you know, so you give them the benefit of the doubt and maybe that's where they are. Have you ever disagreed with anything I've said? Oh, good Lord, never. You're just wonderful. Yes, you're just a god. So I'm the only one? Wait a minute. I'm the um, only one? Hold on. Oh, I just got to, um, because you had prepared this for me, remember? Yeah. Yeah. You are a Greek god, an Adonis, a man among men, and no, I have n never disagreed with you. Love, Tom. Yeah, perfect. You read that very well. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming in here, buddy. <laughs> Thanks for having me. And hey, listen, you, you, you do a great thing here in Barrie. I, I love the fact that um, you know you hit some of the tough issues. Um, Are we still friends? I'm. I try to be friends with everybody. Yes. You get. Uh, yeah. You you chill as you get older. You start to figure out that you know what's important, what's not, and like yeah. I said, control is an illusion. None of yes. us are in control. We're only in control of how we react. Mm. So, words of wisdom from your Uncle Tom. <laughs> Thanks, Uncle Tom. Thanks, for, Thanks, coming. Thanks for coming in here, buddy. Thank you. We appreciate it. Uh, my goodness. Our former mayor uh, speaking very candidly today on the podcast. Uh, thanks to Vermont Custom Woodworking and the Barry Montpelier Times Argus. Donnybrook Fight Promotion making the big announcement yesterday, February 19th. The Battle in Barry 6 is coming back to the Barry Auditorium. Who will be in the cage? Will it be me and 
Tom Lausanne? Pooh. <laughs> you don't know. Uh, Wright Electric, Fontaine Forestry and Millwork, Gothier's Quality Grounds and Maintenance, K&W Tire, Emsley's Floors and Gifts, Granite City, MMA, and Barslow Construction. I just had a vision of Michael Booten in tights. What? What did you say? You mentioned, like, you know, the, the, the wrestling match, the, the MMA. Michael Booten in tights? We can settle all these council differences in one shot. Michael, it was not me that said that. I have no. Well, wait a minute. No part of this. I'm on to something here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can, can we just say you can count on me, JD? Did, have you seen him blow up balloons? Have you seen his <coughs> balloon art? Michael yeah. it is inspiring. Amazing. Oh my god, the kids love it. And, I love it. And his voice. I mean, the guy can sing. Yeah. He's one of my favorites. Michael, I hope that remark wasn't viewed as disparaging. I'm just I yeah. I just when you sit, mentioned like settle our differences because Michael is so compassionate and you know and gentle that I, I just like, oh my god. When you mentioned you and I, because I'm not going in the ring, yeah. so I'm like, okay, who could I get in there with JD? Michael Booten. Uh, yeah, but yeah, but yeah, no. <laughs> well, yeah, no. I'm here to help. All right, I'm cutting you off. Tom Lozon, everybody, here on Aired Out. Thanks for catching the show. <laughs>